Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am super excited to continue our new series titled Happily Ever After. In this show, I share how to fix a common type of wrinkling with nothing more than a roll of masking tape to simulate a concave spreader roller. While many of you might know about this web handling magic trick, my guess is that all of you can learn something new. A very early consulting job was for wrinkling on a newer lightweight product. After inspecting the line, see Web 401 A through F on how to see, I found that wrinkling was initiated on only three idler rollers. I applied tape to the edges of those rollers to simulate the concave spreader roller. Problem solved. In the exit meeting, the plant manager asked me whether I was going to charge her $5,000 for taping the rollers. I replied, you're done right. I'm going to charge you $5,000. You asked me to fix the problem. The problem is fixed. She said, B but you only spent 15 minutes taping the rollers. To which I replied, okay, here's my itemized bill. It is $100 for taping the rollers. It is $4,900 for knowing which rollers to tape, how to tape them, and how to know I was not making a mess. This show is an executive review of the $4,900 part of the problem. I've used this technique to solve problems scores of times in my 45-year career. The concave roller is simple to apply. Also, the spreader in any of its forms is inexpensive. This may be the only spreader you need to know about for thin low modulus materials such as Teflon, polyethylene, polypropylene, uh, oriented polypropylene films, as well as many others. I've even used this a few times successfully on high modulus papers but I make no promises here because the odds of success with high modulus products are very low. This is a picture of an optimum concave roller. While the mechanics are PhD complicated, the outcome is simple. The web tends to move to the high diameter ends, but only in traction. The sizing question is very important. It is not, as many people might believe, based on how bad the wrinkling is. Rather, it is how low the web's MD modulus is. For low modulus films, the equivalent of four wraps of masking tape may get you close. For high modulus paper, one wrap may be too much. A better answer is given in the formula based on web tension and modulus. Also, see the references below for further details. There are many variations of the concave spreading principle. If you have a lot of money and a lot of need, you can cut the shape as an arc of a circle on a computer-controlled lathe. On any lathe, you can cut a bow tie or dog bone shape. However, the cheapest and quickest by far is to band the edges of the roller that initiates wrinkles using tape. However, let me warn you that once you let masking tape into the plant, it will be like cockroaches. You will never get rid of it. Thus, an extreme discipline, including training, certification, and recurrent training, may be needed to properly manage this web handling tool. So, here is the $4,900 part of the problem. It is the art and science of taping to simulate a concave spreader roller. If this was a group of operators, we might actually take a break from class and go out onto the floor and practice the technique for real. For the rest of you, pause the playback and carefully study each step. 
Many bosses and QA managers will ask why use tape instead of cutting metal. Tape looks crude and can be a dirty mess for food or medical products. The answer is simple. Because tape is much faster, much cheaper, and a much more reliable way to learn which rollers to tape and how much concave to use. If you want to cut rollers afterwards, fine. Just don't expect that pretty NC cut rollers to perform much better than tape. In fact, tape is much better than metal for two situations. The first is where the moduli varies widely on a machine. For example, if you want to run a low modulus film on one day, the equivalent of four wraps of tape might be best. If you run paper the next day, either one or none wraps might be the best answer. However, metal is not adjustable. In that example, you would have to cut at most the equivalent of one wrap of tape so that paper doesn't mispave. And then, that's not a lot of power for low modulus film. The second case is when you have diagonal wrinkles on one end. There, you would tape one end. I already said that there are many mechanics complications that make explaining how this tool works not possible for most audiences. However, if you had a strong engineering background, I could tell you in about 15 minutes the underlying physics, but you still might not get it in the first telling. The rest of us, however, only need to know that traction is vital. If you break loose on the tape or the body of the roller, you will not just lose spreading. You might go from spreading to the tendency to make wrinkles. Losing traction or too much tape are the two most common failure modes for this spreader. The good web handler should be able to recognize the application causes of any spreader misbehavior. Thank you so very much for letting me share stories from the field. Stay tuned for next week when I will share how I fixed a crippling design problem on a $25 million winder with masking tape. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found any of these stories to be interesting or useful, please like and share and subscribe. And remember to check out the show notes for surprises. See you next time.